Effective fam, Wednesday morning, weather is... Uh... You're watching is actually Vision Expander reporting from London. Uh, for the first time, London have experienced unusual weather. As you can see, the snow is all over the place. Not so great, feeling a little bit sore in the effective house today because of doing a workout yesterday. Come on, come on. Faster, faster. Yeah, well done. I went to Anytime Gym. That's where we all go these days. All these workouts right now are like after midnight because we've had so much stuff going on during the day, so much work going on during the day, but we still put in the work after hours. That's the most important thing about this, right, Hash? Yeah. You already know what it is. We're gonna give you value today because that's what we wanna do. And um, today's video is gonna be about how to represent your country in a World Cup. Now, this sounds very far-fetched or whatever. What we're gonna focus on today is um, from a snippet in the interview that we did with Jimmy Conrad a while back, uh, but I think right now it's really, really valuable, especially as, as you guys set your goals for next season. A lot of you guys, especially in the US, you finish your season, you're in the off season, you're thinking about goals for the future, you're thinking, how do I come from here to here, or hopefully you are. So the snippet I'm about to show you is from Jimmy Conrad. He represented the US in the World Cup back in 2006. We had a great interview about, what, one or two months ago when he came over to London to play in the Wembley Cup. Um, and we got talking about these Jedi mind tricks he would use in order to become a better, more confident player. These tricks are all in the realm of confidence. And how you get confidence is, well, check out this snippet. I remember, and this is a trick that I did, like a mind trick that I tried, and I couldn't keep it up. But in 2001, which is going to make me sound really old, I probably shouldn't give him the year. <laughs> I was playing with the San Jose Earthquakes, and the captain of the national team, Jeff Agus, was on my team in San Jose. And he'd get called into camp, which is like the coolest thing. When you're with your club team and you get called into the national team, like you, you must feel like a stud, yeah. right? Like, yeah, guys, I got I to gotta take off for two weeks. <laughs> I'm going to go fly all over the world to play for my national team. I mean, that just sounds like the coolest thing. Yeah. Because he came back, and when he comes back, you know, his, his chest is all puffed, <laughs> and he's like the man. Yeah. Like, what is that glow? What is that aura around him right now? <laughs> you can't replicate that confidence. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, you know what? I'm going to just act like I played for the national team, just for a couple days, and see what that feels like, that confidence. So for three straight days, I just acted like I played for the national team. And that, like, reshaping my mind to see what that confidence was like, was incredible. But I was doing like cheeky back heels. I was playing, laughing, having a good time. Like <laughs> I felt like I could do anything because I just embodied this confidence that I had never tried before. And at that point, I was really inconsistent in my confidence, right? I have a bad pass or a bad play. And what ends up happening is if you have a bad pass and you put your head down and everybody knows that you're disappointed about it, it reinforces what people think about you. The cheeky back heels, the laughing that it was displaying, this is all part of body language. Now, body language sounds like a boring word, something your teachers would say, but it's really true. It's really, really true. How you get more confident is through your body language. If a coach has ever told you, don't put your head down after you make a mistake, it, this is the same, same stuff. I'm gonna relate it with something that I saw um, a couple of years ago actually, and, and I think it definitely made me feel more confident. It's this TED talk from Amy Cuddy, check this out. So I wanna start by um, offering you a free, no tech life hack. Um, and all it requires of you is this, that you change your posture for two minutes. I became especially interested in nonverbal expressions of power and dominance. Um, and what are nonverbal expressions of power and dominance? Well, this is what they are. So in the animal kingdom, they are about expanding. So you make yourself big, you stretch out, you take up space, you're basically opening up. It's about opening up. So we know that our nonverbals govern how other people think and feel about us. There's a lot of evidence, but our question really was, do our nonverbals govern how we think and feel about ourselves? There's some evidence that they do. So, for example, um, when we, we smile when we feel happy, but also when we're forced to smile by holding a pen in our teeth like this, it makes us feel happy. So it goes both ways. So what do the minds of the powerful versus the powerless look like? Powerful people 
tend to be, not surprisingly, more assertive and more confident, uh, more, more optimistic. They actually feel that they're going to win even at games of chance. They take more risks. There are a lot of differences between powerful and powerless people. Physiologically, there also are differences on two key hormones, testosterone, which is the dominance hormone, and cortisol, which is the stress hormone. What we find is that high power alpha males in primate hierarchies have high testosterone and low cortisol. And powerful and effective leaders also have high testosterone and low cortisol. So what does that mean? When you think about power, ten, people tended to think only about testosterone because that was a, about dominance. But really, power is also about how you react to stress. So do you want the high power leader that's dominant, high on testosterone, but really stress reactive? Probably not, right? You want the person who's powerful and assertive and dominant, but not very stress reactive, the person who's laid back. We decided to uh, bring people into the lab and run a little experiment. And these people adopted for two minutes either high power poses or low power poses. And I'm just going to show you five of the poses, although they took on only two. So here's one, here are a couple more, uh, and here are the low power poses. So you're folding up, you're making yourself small. This one is very low power. So two minutes they do this, and then we take another saliva sample. Here's what we find on testosterone. From their baseline when they come in, high power people experience about a 20% increase, and low power people experience about a 10% decrease. So again, two minutes and you get these changes. Here's what you get on cortisol. High power people experience about a 25% decrease, and the low-power people experience about a 15% increase. So two minutes lead to these hormonal changes that configure your brain to basically be either assertive, confident, and comfortable, or really stress-reactive. <sighs> yep, that's my power pose. I feel more confident already. So really, if you think about it, how do you represent your country? Confidence. It's just extra confidence. At a certain point, when everybody's talent and everyone's ability is at this point and there's nothing to really separate them, what is that differentiating factor? It's confidence and I've seen it talked over and over again by guys like Jimmy, by Amy um, and by top athletes from around the world. It's confidence and if you really narrow it down to that and focus on things like your body language, you will become more confident. And things like your body language, things like, like power posing, stuff like that, that doesn't take a lot of effort. You just gotta make it a habit. So that's all we wanted to talk to you about today from the Effective Fam. Um, just wanna give you tons and tons and tons and tons of value, tons of insights, tons of tips, uh, cause I know we ain't got that pitch yet, but it's coming. And until it comes, stay effective. So, Effective Fam, if any of you were wondering how you can train like a professional because you don't have good coaches or teams around you, then I made something for you. Look, check this out. You just drop your workouts in your schedule, work out with whatever you got, and earn points and badges. 
All the content is made by the legend himself, John Moses, and even Premier League coaches will educate you. Awesome, right? Thousands of players from over 45 different countries have used it to get to the next level. And guys, if you've ever dreamt of living with us in London, England, here's your chance. If you're between the ages of 15 and 25, we've got spots open for our in-residence program for 2017 and 18. Check the link below. And if you want to see more content from me, here's my channel, Nick Humphreys. Subscribe, hit it, hit it, hit it. And of course, subscribe to the Train Effective channel. We've got new content daily. Peace.